So how many of you would like more abilities in a certain area? Say, all right, I'll pick on some people over here. Paul, you put your hand up. What do you want? What? You, you put your hand up, right? Yes. What, do, what would you like more abilities in? I would like basically more abilities to be more active, more, more physical. More physically active? Okay. Um, Bill's hand went up, I think. Sailing. Sailing, okay. <laughs> Clyde? Sailing. Sit. <laughs> Anybody out here brave enough? Earl? I'd like to sing. Do you like to sing? They'll take you over here, even if you can. <laughs> Marie? I'm trying to be more patient. Be more patient. I was actually going to say that later. That I saw on Facebook somebody posted about how they're supposed to be patient. So you got to watch what you post on Facebook if you're my friend. It might wind up in a sermon. But somebody who shall not be named, posted on Facebook about wanting more patience. And I posted a video clip. This is kind of off where we're going today, but it's a beautiful clip, so you all need to hear about it. But the movie um, Evan Almighty, if you haven't seen it, rent it. It's got this beautiful scene where the, the wife is having issues with the father because Evan's building an ark, right? He's a congressman who's in Washington, D.C., and he's building an ark. Um, and the wife just has huge issues with this and she's running away with the kids she's going to her mother's house and they stop at a restaurant to eat and and god comes in and she's it's her waiter right is god and she's talking to him about how she's she wants more patience she's been praying to god for more patience and basically the 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 gist of it is um if you ask god for patience do you think god is going to give you patience or is he going to put you in situations which allow you to understands what being patient is, right? Which actually really does fit in with our text today, right? Because the disciples come to Jesus and what do they say? Increase our faith. The four verses right before this, Jesus says to them, if anybody sins against you and comes to you and says that I'm sorry, you have to forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and come to you and say they're sorry, each time they come to you and say they're sorry, you have to forgive them. The disciples say to Jesus, increase our faith. Help me to do this. How am I supposed to be able to do this? We all want greater abilities to be able to, to do these things, right? And, and, and my answer to these three over here and to you two out there, if you the thing that you want to do, in order to do it, you have to do it. And then it'll come, right? If you sing more, you'll get better. Earl, if you sing in the shower, you might be able to join the choir. Marie, I can give you many instances where you'll have to learn how to be patient. So I can help you with that. I will be the biggest one of them. <laughs> All right? Sail more, move more, do these things. You're going to get better at them. The more we do things, the more we get better at them. Right? Maybe. Practice makes perfect isn't always true. Perfect practice makes perfect. But moving and doing things helps us to learn new things and to understand who we are in Christ. But the disciples say to Jesus, after he's told them they have to forgive people, Seven times, I think it's seven times. Or is it 70 times? 70 times seven. In a day. It says in a day, though, doesn't it? Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if that same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and say, I repent, you must forgive. You must forgive. If someone comes to you and says, I repent, I'm sorry for what I've done. The, the answer Jesus says to them is, you're forgiven. And that's when the disciples go. Increase our faith. And we hear this as, as something that we all want. Because we all want our faith to be increased. We all want to figure out where we're at spiritually. We all want to understand what God is calling us to do. And how <coughs> God is leading us to do all of these things. And here's here's the, the truth of the matter this morning. Um, I wonder that, right? I had a conversation this morning with one of our council members about understanding where they're at spiritually. 
And, and I, my response to the council member was, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. There's times I don't know where I'm at spiritually or understanding things. There's times that I don't trust what is, what is right in front of me. If you, if you ever want to know the truth on that, you can ask my wife. She'll tell you. Um, it came to point when we were getting ready to move, we packed our truck in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, even before that, I said I wasn't going to seminary. We were, we had sold, we were selling our house. We were getting ready to, I was getting ready to start seminary. And, and it finally came down to it where she looked at me and she said, I'm moving to Gettysburg whether you're coming or not. Because we had one kid, we still owned a house in North Carolina, and another child was on the way. I didn't understand how we were going to afford paying for seminary. I didn't understand how we were going to afford paying for a house when we weren't even living in it. I didn't understand how we were going to support one extra mouth out of the two of us, let alone another mouth out of the two of us. There's no clue on how that's going to work. And if you ask me today how it worked, my answer to you is going to be, I don't have a clue how it worked, but it did. And now we have three extra mouths to feed. <laughs> There's been several times just stepping out on faith. Coming here was a step out on faith. Resigning from my previous call was a step out on faith. And that's the thing that we have to understand, you see. We always want this extra, extraordinary amount of faith to be able to do these great and wonderful things because that's what God is leading us to. But the answer is always... You have what you need. Because that's what Jesus said, right? The disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus said to them, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you would be able to tell this mulberry tree to be uprooted and plant itself in the sea and it would obey you. Now, wouldn't that be cool to be able to say, tree! Get up! Go to the sea! And watch it just pull itself up out of the ground and walk itself over to the bay and just pop into it. Right? Am I the only one that thinks that that would be cool? I mean... (laughs) But my question on my blog this morning was, who really needs that kind of power? Do you need to be able to tell a tree to move? Now, sure, it might be nice in your backyard. You're thinking, you know, if this tree wasn't here, I could put this here. So if I could just move this tree... Four feet that way. This would be so much better. Right? So at that point, if you could say, tree, move over there a little bit. Right? That would be, that'd be nice. But there's other ways to get rid of that tree. Call Clyde. (laughs) He's really good at tree removal, too. He likes to sing. He might even sing while he's removing your tree. (laughs) But do we need to be able to tell a tree to move? We don't. And when we hear that, we hear Jesus say, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, and why is a mustard seed important? Because it's a really small seed, right? Go home and look in your cupboard. If it, parents, some parents probably actually have mustard as a spice in your, in your kitchen. If not, go to the store and look in the, the spices aisle. You'll find mustard. And those are the size of a mustard seed. It's really small. And in Jesus' day, the mustard seed was actually the smallest seed known about. Right? So it's the smallest thing that they would know about. And Jesus said, if you had the faith the size of this, right, really small thing, you could do all of these great and wonderful things. But when a slave does what they're told to do with what they're given and the, and the skills that they have, do they get any extra commendations? Do they get anything extra? Which we hear as, as kind of condescending, right? You hear Jesus say, if you had faith that was really, really tiny, you'd be able to do all these things. And slaves get what they deserve. And we hear that and we go, so I don't have a lot of faith and I really shouldn't ask for anything else. Right? Am I the only one that, when you first read that, thinks that that's what it sounds like? That's what it sounds like. It sounds like Jesus has given these disciples a hard time. But I don't think that's what Jesus meant. Jesus said, if you had the faith this big, you could do, move this tree, tell a mountain to get up and and become a flat plain. You could do all of these things. 
But you have the skills you need to do that which I've called you to do. And you have enough faith to do exactly what I'm leading you to and, and sending you out into the world to do. You don't need any more. What you have is enough. Because acts of faith are merely daily, droning, simple tasks that we do day in and day out. Martin Luther once said that an act of faith is a father changing and washing a baby's dirty diaper. And when that father gets ridiculed by society because that's not what a man's supposed to do, right? Again, that's... Martin Luther, remember Martin Luther's from like the 1400s, 1500s, right? When he gets, when that father is ridiculed by society, God and the angels are smiling because of the act of faith that this man has done. Martin Luther actually wrote that. Because see, we think that these acts of faith have to be big things, like moving from North Carolina to Gettysburg, or Gettysburg to Ohio, and Ohio to Texas, and Texas to Wisconsin. Now that's an act of faith, but you getting up and, and cooking your kids breakfast, or you getting up and plowing a neighbor's driveway, or you getting up and going and removing a tree from a neighbor's yard, or you doing whatever it is that you do day in and day out. God has given you enough strength and intelligence and faith to go about what he has called you for and set you out on mission for. He's given you everything you could possibly need. And the only thing we have to remember is to rely completely on him. Because that's where we'll take that step out. That's when we'll start those things. Right? I saw a great movie this past weekend. It made me cry. It's called Miracles from Heaven. You should all watch it. It'll probably make all of you cry. It turns out really good in the end. I don't think that that's a spoiler alert. I think that, you know. It's in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the, the preview for the movie, it's in the preview. So, But even through the movie, there's something that I bet a lot of people didn't catch that I caught. Because in this movie, there's a young girl who has this incurable disease. The mother, they live in Texas. The mother's flying her to Boston all the time trying to get her checked out. And get all of this stuff taken care of. And, and the doctor basically says, we can make her comfortable, but she's going to die. And the mother is trying to go to church. They go to church. By the way, the worship band in that movie happens to be Third Day, which I would love to go to a church that has Third Day as the worship band. If you don't know who Third Day is, you need to figure, find that out. And, and I would love to go to church in a word that had Third Day for a worship band. But... They go to church and basically there's a few people in this church that come up and this happens all the time in different places. I've never seen it happen here. I don't ever expect it to happen here. But the people went up to her and said that her daughter's sick because either she, the wife, the husband, or the, the daughter are doing something that's bad and sinning against God and therefore that's why the daughter is sick. I actually said this to her after worship in church. She left. She left, never came back, right? I mean, what else would you do? And she basically told her husband that she lost her faith. She told the pastor that she lost her faith. She couldn't understand how a loving God would do something like this to this beautiful little girl. I mean, why would God do this? And she lost her faith. But at one point, the girl falls in a tree, hits her head, falls down into a tree and hits her head on the ground, 30 feet. She was up 30 feet in the air, fell into the tree. And as they're trying to get her out of the tree, the mother goes up to the tree and starts to pray. She said she lost her faith. But if she lost her faith, why is she now kneeling at the side of this tree where her daughter has been stuck for who knows how many hours praying that everything will be okay? See, that is the step that God wants from each and every one of us. Because the faith that you need, the skills that you need, God has already given to you. And He's waiting for you to take that first step. And when you can let loose and give everything over to God, and know that the faith that you have is enough, you're going to take that first step and it's going to be the leap of a lifetime. 
Because God is always going to be there to follow through. God is always going to be there to have your back. And God is always going to be there to lift you up when you fall down. Because he's given you everything you need. So just give it up. And trust in him. And he will take you on the journey of a lifetime.